much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Dolores for inviting me here. And of course, to thanks everybody who made it possible uh, for me to be here today, sharing with you, and especially thanks to you, you know, to give me the opportunity to share with you my experience, my vision of, of life, and, and how, how I, I do the things, okay? <clears throat> and uh, I, I came here um, to the United States uh, four months ago. I, mo I moved here from Venezuela, and uh, one of the things that I bring in my mind when I came here was to be doing exactly things that I'm doing right now, you know? To have the opportunity to speak with uh, someone who could need, you know, sometimes um, a motivation or, you know, uh, this, this different way to, to see the light. And I came here to the, to, to the lighthouse and uh, I, I, I uh, one of the things that I, that I, that I start to do is, is offer, offer me as a volunteer. And uh, they say, well, you're very welcome, uh, but we, we want to, to give you back. And I start here doing some programs, some mobility, and a computer, and, and all of those stuff. Uh, for me, those are little, little things that makes a big difference. And um, some days, as Dolores said a few minutes ago, I met her, and she invited me to be the guest speaker uh, at her group. And the thing is that when she said guest speaker, you know, was was amazing because, as I say, that was one of the things that I really wanted to do uh, here in the United States, you know, to be speaker, to good, uh, to have this opportunity. But the thing is that, uh, of course, that you don't know, but right now I'm studying English. Mm -hmm. uh, to be guest speaker, it means that I should do this speak in English. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, I'm, I'm not really fluent. My grammar is, is, is a disaster, and uh, my vocabulary is, is, is pretty limited. And for me, sometimes it's hard to, you know, to find the right word. And, and I really want that you could you know, get the right message, the, 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 the right idea that I want to, to express. And of course, this is, this is, this is a very big challenge. I, I'm, I'm so scary right now, and so, I'm so nervous, yeah, really. and but, but this is this is a very big challenge, you know. And I am also very happy. I'm very excited to be here and to have this opportunity. And uh, you know, Dolores uh, uh, called this 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 day that the, the the sky is the limit, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine another way to to think that the sky is the limit without facing challenges in your life. That's the only way that you could, you know, have the opportunity to believe that the sky is limit is facing big, big challenges in your life. The greatness and the adversity goes, go out, walk to the, uh, around the, the, the street hand to hand. You know, how high is the challenge that you face? Uh, how high is, could be the goal that you could reach? That's very important. <coughs> Sorry. No problem with my computer. Okay. And but I can I can imagine a better place to be doing what I am doing right now to be <laughs> starting with this amazing opportunity that the lighthouse. <clears throat> lighthouse is a is an amazing place with an amazing people. All the staff, all the volunteers, all the clients like you are amazing persons uh, who have pioneers. You know, the pioneers are persons who can see the yes when others see the no. And it's, it's very important the mission that that uh, that lighthouse have. It's very important the work that they have, and very important that you could have the opportunity to be here today and every day that you come to this magic place. Because they work with the present. They work with the things that you have today, with your resource. You know, I mean, they work with the reality that you have. 
you have to work every day to build your computer. You know, it's the, the things that you do today are, are going to, to determine the, what are you going to be in your computer. Um, I came by the Foundation Fighting Linus. I had the opportunity to, maybe some of you could have it, but well, the thing is I had the opportunity to, to participate in Vision Walk. I do a couple, uh, three or four uh, presentation, you know, promoting and trying to get people involved in this, this amazing uh, event. I think that the mission of Vision, uh, the Fighting Line, the Foundation Fighting Linus is, is very important to but the difference is that they work with the pure, you know. You know, I think that they are pioneers too. They they have an amazing vision, but it means that they work with something that is is, is not real today. And uh, as I say, we have to work today to build our future, but we have to do it today. We can be sitting there waiting and uh, you know hoping that the futures could be better. No. You have to do it right now. And I think that most of you, or all of you, are doing it, coming here and looking for new skills and new ways, and looking to reveal and to get you know, a, 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 a complete and a beautiful life. Well, I was talking about the, the future, I was talking about the present, but I want to talk about the past, you know? Because my past was that determines what I am right now. <clears throat> the thing is that I was I was diagnosed with RP, retinitis pigmentosa, at the age of four years. Uh, my parents should, took me here to the to the Boston Palmer's Eye Institute from Venezuela, because in my country they didn't know anything about that illness. I uh, remember they visited uh, a lot of uh, different uh, doctors, and they didn't know anything that this this illness. Uh, you know, exist. <clears throat> but, uh, well, uh, at the Boston Farmers Eye Institute, they diagnosed, and the doctor said at my fourth year, they say that in two years I should get blind, completely blind, because my, my illness was really advanced. Well, right now I, I am 39 years old, and I just have like 10%. I am not blind. <clears throat> but of course, in that moment, that was a very hard news for my mother. Uh, you can imagine that you know um, uh, a young mother uh, with this little boy for years, and, and she thought that in just two days, and in just two years, sorry, uh, he could get blind. And you know there is a little a, a period of time between the, the stimulus and the response, and you have to choose what are you going to do. When, when you are in this situation. And my mother chose to move on. You know, some people when face difficult situations could crash or could move on. And she decided to move on. She decided that his little boy should have two years or three years or whatever, a few years that the doctor said, and he should, he should have the opportunity to live most of the things that he could, he should have the opportunity to live as any other little boy as his age. And that was that she did. I remember that I started to grow up as any other, you know, looking that I had, that I had uh, those, those, those different, those limitations, those, those little problems, uh, especially in mobility. But, um, you know, I remember me doing what, all of the things that a, a, a little boy of my age uh, used to do. I remember, uh, well, you know, playing, uh, riding bike, uh, uh, hiking, uh, mountains, whatever. And my mother has those those behavior that you know. I think that really determines what I am right now. And um, you know, my mother. In, I remember. Sometimes I was looking the newspaper very close <laughs> to my eyes, of course. <laughs> but I was looking the newspaper, and I saw an ad uh, showing a three-wheel uh, electrical motorcycle, and I said to my mom, "Mom, I really want one more little motorcycle." <laughs> yes, and you know, she 
But she, she didn't give me the, that motorcycle. She gave me a two wheels, a non electrical, a two wheel <laughs> gas motorcycle. You know, like mm -hmm. a real motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> really tiny, but a real motorcycle. Of course, everybody said to her, You are completely out of your mind. You know, he's a very little boy, five years old, and he's almost blind. Do you want that he killed herself or he cared really herself? But she decided no. She she wants to give me that that opportunity. And of course I I, I started really quickly quickly to, to ride my motorcycle and I feel like the king of the world, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's very exciting. And some days this is a very, very funny and I think a, a little scary too uh, story. Someday I was, you know, riding my motorcycle, you know, feeling the eye on my face, you know, everything was really fine. I was riding, I remember, in a, in a sidewalk in a park that she used to, to, to take me. I remember my sister with his, his bike, <clears throat> and I know for any other children over there. And I was riding that, you know, very, very exciting, and so, suddenly my motorcycle disappeared. Yeah, completely disappeared. Uh, I found myself hitting the ground, you know, and then I remember that in the first minutes I, I, I couldn't realize what was going on. You know, my motorcycle literally disappeared. The thing is that there was a very big hole in the sidewalk and the motorcycle fell down. <coughs> and yes, and I fly to the other side and hit the ground and stay there, you know? Yeah, that's, that's. Ouch. Ouch, yeah. Yeah, of course, a lot of scratch and, you know. And what, what my mother did, the thing is that my mother, you know, of course, run to help me to, 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 to wake up and everything. She, she asked for help, you know, to take the motorcycle from those really deep holes. And later, she took the motorcycle to the mechanic, and when the motorcycle was ready, she gave me back my motorcycle. Wow. Yes. <laughs> but I can remember, I can remember my mother saying, "Take care, watch out, be careful." I can remember that. Of course, I'm sure that she, that she should tell me sometime, but that, that's yes. <laughs> don't, don't don't get thinking that my mother is is a crazy girl. <laughs> but. The thing is that that was not the, the common world in, 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 you know, in her. And, well, later we moved to, to a, 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 a little community uh, far from the city. It was a suburb, but really far. That, that community was in the mountains. <clears throat> it was a very, very amazing and nice place. And, you know, as I say, inside the mountain with golf course and very quiet. And I, I, I remember me growing up really free, you know, going hiking to, to rivers with my friends, hiking mountains, and riding my bike, of course, riding my motorcycle. <laughs> and all of those things, very, very exciting, but, you know, without fears. And that was very important. Another, another, another detail of this community that that this community hasn't uh, <clears throat> public electric electric light, you know, and during the night it was completely dark, completely dark. And uh, of course, for some of you that are that, that know what is the, the RP know that we have we are uh, night vision, a uh, blind vision, sorry. And uh, during the night it was completely blind, completely. And I remember me walking, you know, around without dog, without cane, without anything, walking because I I couldn't knew the places. I uh, and during the day, I, you know, I have my, my my map, my my mental map of the place. And during the night, I remember me walking around without any help, you know, walking with my friend, but outside, no 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 holding that. And this, this, this place was really quiet, but was very safety place. And, you know, I developed, I feel that I developed this kind of, of, uh, of uh, sense 
um, I could I could uh, you know feel the, the the ground feel the grass with my with my shoes walking I could feel all the difference in the in the street I could feel the sounds the noise the little wherever a tree close to me whatever it, it could be I could you know develop this the sense and you know to have this opportunity uh, without fears but because this is very important uh, I think that is there is there is the key that that you don't have to be living in fear you know to to have a, a little scratch or a big scratch or whatever you you don't have to move on and I you know walking and, and doing all my activities during the night as I say I develop that kind of self-confidence and that kind of self-esteem that that give me, you know, this strong personality to face the, the challenge that has to be gone in my life, you know. And of course, when I was a teenager in this, again, in this community, I started dating and, you know, I remember, of course, for, for every teenager, it's kind of scary, you know, when you start dating, but I remember that I had that strong self-confidence and I remember, you know, feeling comfortable walking around during the night, of course, very dark. And I remember walking around, going to what was really common that we had to walk on the golf course. And, you know, I, I used to play guitar that days, and, and it was very, very funny and was very, very nice because, again, the important is that you have a strong self confidence and, and you have to feel, you know, that you could do whatever you want. Also, this, as I said, that was mountain, you know, and the golf course has a deep field. I remember a friend of mine, William, he was, I think that I, I was a little crazy, but he was completely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he and me with, with our BMX bicycles, you know, Go, going down here during the night, of course, during the day, it was not, it, it was not possible, you know, it, it was not permit. It was forbid to, to ride the bikes on the wall, go for oh. Yes, but I remember during the night with those deep heels, you know, he said, come on, are you ready? Yes, let's go, and, you know, following him, he was talking to me, and completely dark, you know, I, I couldn't see anything. But that's what the thing that you have to, you have to you have to have this this strong self confidence that that is that is uh, very very important uh, for you and uh, sorry okay of course I'm not going to say that I didn't feel you know scary uh, or I didn't feel you know it, it was very very uh, very stressed to be living thinking that some days you could lose your vision completely and um, you know that uh, I'm sure that and uh, it was very scary uh, it was some uh, you know stress but the, the truth is that I, I wasn't scary about to be living in, in, in darkness or to be living in, in, in you know as a blind person and I, I, I'm sure that for you it's, it's easy to understand that. But what's, what I was really scary is to be disability, you know? To feel that the things that I used to do was not possible to do it again. And that I should stop, you know, to do, to do some things, to be an active life, to be challenging me. And that was that I was really scary because, you know, I didn't, I didn't knew I just I just knew someone blind was a, a question of mine, but I didn't know a lot of people blind, and and for me was 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 really 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 you know strange to to be feeling those things. But the thing is that when you have this this uh, strong self confidence, and when you have this you know. This kind of, of sense that you could develop, you don't have to be never, never and ever. You don't have to be feeling sorry about yourself. It's it's very important that you understand that you just are living a situation, and you are not living 
uh, and, a, and a big problem, or, or sometimes you could feel that it's difficult, but you always should understand that you have the control of your life. It's very important, as I, as I say, as I see, that you don't feel victim, you know. Sometimes, sometimes we, we used to feel like victims uh, because we have those kind of problems or those kind of illness or limitations. And I want to stop a little bit here. The doctor, the doctor uh, Stephen Harman developed a concept. He, he was a psychologist, uh, good view of uh, Dr. Uh, Eric Berman, who was a Canadian, very important uh, uh, psychologist. <clears throat> and he developed some, some, something that he called the dramatic triangle. The dramatic triangle is a triangle, of course, that has three corners, of course. <laughs> and both of them are up and just one down. In the downside, there are the victim. And the upper corners, in one is the persecutor, and in another one is the rescuer. It's very important that what I'm talking about right now, because sometimes when you leave feeling yourself as a victim, uh, the persecutor, of course, it would, it would be your, your illness. Your, your blindness, your, uh, your problem. And when you are living in this kind of behavior, you are looking for rescuer. And you are looking for rescuer in every relationship, you know, with your, with your uh, partner, with your uh, doctor, with your uh, teacher, or with wherever you have a side view. You are looking for rescuers. And this is not a good way, and it is, this is not really a good, a healthy way to relate with any other. When you look relationship from this uh, dramatic triangle, you are going to be involved in a dependent relation. And the person beside you is going to be, you know, feeling uh, very sacrificed. You have to stop that. And the way to stop that is to stop that your illness or your blindness is a persecutor. This is not, you are not a victim. You are just a person as any other. You are not different than any other. You are similar to others because everybody is different than others, you know, than each other. Some, some, someone have a vision problems, someone have hearing problems, someone, someone are rich, someone poor, someone, you know, have uh, very smart in mathematics, someone don't. It's just, it's just a different condition, okay? You don't have to feel, to be feeling that you are a big, very big problem, that the thing is that sometimes the illness or those kind of situations, they are really egocentric, you know? And we used to feel that everything that happened with us is related to the illness. You know, we have to feel that the, all, especially the bad things, no? The, the good, no, <laughs> especially the bad things are related to, to, the, to the, the illness. And the thing that we can't do, we think, we used to think that are because we are, in this case, blind. And this is not true. I am not singer, you know, singer, because not not because I'm blind. That's because I have no a good voice, you know. <laughs> that, that, that's what I mean, you know. We used to we used to feel that when when we have a problem, we can do a lot of things because we have those kind of problem or limitation, you know, <clears throat> or, or impediments. But that's that is not true. Everybody have strengths. Everybody have weakness. And you just have to look for what are your strengths and what are your weakness. And you have to work with. That's, that's very simple. <clears throat> I, I used to feel that, you know, that a long time ago, I used to feel that my life was very complicated. Uh, I think that most of you should feel like <laughs> I used to feel that I had to do a lot of work, more than anybody, to good, reach whatever I want, you know. Because, as I say, my, I, I used to compare. The rule that I used to compare was my, my impediment, my visual impediment. 
Of course, if you do that, you are, you, for, for sure you are going to find that everything is hard for you. But when you realize that you are a complete person, that the vision is just 20% of your sense. And as a friend uh, yesterday told me that the Buddhist uh, thing that you have five cents because the, the, the brain is one other sense, it should be 50%, but you know, it's a 20% of your sense. And it's, it's a little bit percent uh, in, in the, all the capacities that you have. You have the capacity you don't have, or you, you don't have good your capacity of see, but you have the capacity of love, of understand, of, of touch, of feel, of a lot of capacities, different ones, you know? You are not a blind person, you are a person who can see, it, you know? But you are a complete person that has a lot of things to give, that has a lot of things to do, different than just your vision. And you start, you, you need to stop to, to, to feel that your life is completely hard than any other. I, I, I used to say when someone told me that, oh, but you have a person that have a really, really difficult life. No, man, you want to see that? Come, if you want to take an airplane, if you are, and then you are a kind of fairy, come with me. You are going to be really quickly, you know? Most of you should know that. We have a special treatment in many places. We have, we have a little story. I remember one day when I was with my girlfriend, with my, with my wife, and, you know, uh, in, 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 a, in a house of friends, you know, going, going out. <clears throat> and the, the, the street was really dark. You know, she was looking for the lock of the, of the, of the car door. And you know, after a few minutes, she was looking for it. She couldn't. She couldn't open the car. And I said, "Come on, give me the key." And, you know, in five seconds, we, we we was inside. You know, <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> you know, the, the life is not it's not hard. You just have to find the, the things, the little things, or the big things that you could do faster and better than any other who have vision. And I'm sure that you are going to find it. But you need to look for. You can be feeling sorry about yourself. This is this is this is very very important. I realized this doing um, what I what I'm talking about. I realized this doing a, 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 a postgraduate course as a life coach. <clears throat> and in this course, they they touch, they they tell us, they, they teach us that 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 those things are just judgments, you know. And the judgment you have to base base it on. When you try to base it on, you have to look for so many uh, um, statements that you get used to base it on. And you you need to use you need to try to base the the opposite judgment. You know you know what I'm what I'm trying to say. If the life is difficult, I need to find too many uh, uh, situations that my life is difficult, and I need to 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 think. No, my life is not difficult, and I need to find too many situations that my life is not difficult. And I, 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 I really wanted to tell you that I could find more situations that my life is not difficult than any other, than the situation when my life is difficult. This is, this is, this is really, really, really important. And you know, it is. It's, I think that that it's, it's necessary that you start to do those things to stop to be, as I, I used to hear, I don't know if you do that, but I used to hear somebody feeling sorry about, about what's going on <clears throat> with, with them. And you just have to do that and you have to, to explain to other person, especially when you are, when you are not complete blind, I, uh, I, I, I know that sometimes it's harder because the people can understand the low vision person, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's, it's uh, imagine that we can say no, but if you are blind, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you are low low vision, it's, it's harder, you know. And it, maybe it's true in some situations. It's true, you know. The, the blind are going to be thinking, oh, but these people is completely crazy, you know. How <laughs> no, you can say that? You have a little vision, and you you are going to say that that it's harder for you. But it's true. 
sometimes it's hard because most people can understand that the low vision person. You're blind or you can see what what is going on with you. You're using a cane, but you can see what what, what are you doing? <laughs> You're doing a kind of yoga what is going on? <laughs> and and sometimes we feel we feel you know afraid of, or or in that case I used to feel afraid to to be rejected because I I, I have this this uh, this limitation. And when I when I when I had a little more vision than, than now, that I could control in some places, you know, very light and during the day, <clears throat> I used to I used to work dismissing my problem. I used to try to do things, you know, without saying that I had this problem. And right now I'm feeling that this is completely completely wrong, you know. Uh, for example, I, I, when I was in college, I missed the opportunity to to hike the the peak uh, Humboldt. This is one of the highest peaks in, in the north of South America. It's almost 15,000 feet, and I lost this opportunity because the play, you know, the, the the hiking, it should take several several days, five six days, and of course it should you know be up there on the mountain with uh, during the night and I, I feel afraid that you know the, the team the, the university team could reject me reject me because I was I had this this, this limitation you know and and I, I don't remember which but I I, 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 I found an uh, excuse to say no I don't want to go that's all I don't want to go and the, the truth was that I was afraid. I was afraid to be rejected. And I think that you always can find a right person. You always can find a right team to do whatever you want. And you you can stop yourself. You can't be you know building walls to protect you. You need to to go to go to move on. And. Uh, uh, before this, this 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 experience, I decided that never mind. I was going to, to stop by myself, and but I continued feeling that it could be rejected, and I had those dreams <coughs> that I really want to, to to feel the experience to fly, you know, but not fly inside an airplane, to fly like a bird. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I was looking any. Any different uh, um, activities that could give me this, this this opportunity, and I find that skydiving was <laughs> was a very good <laughs> was a very good way to feel it. And well, the thing is that you know I decided I was going to, to be a skydiver, <laughs> and I went I went to to the to that place. You know, to, to get the the the, the instructions, the the, the the class, the class. You know, to start to be a skydiver. And I remember me in a very dark classroom with a teacher explain with a picture no, took, no, no, took no, no. from the airplane, and he was explaining how are we going to see the airplane and how are we going to find the airplane when we was up there, 400 feet, you know? <laughs> and he was explaining, okay, here you are going to see this, and you're going to see that, and whatever, and I said, ah, oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a scary story again. <laughs> I, I remember me that I jumped from the airplane, and when I do my, my security set <clears throat> that I used to do, I, I, when you jump along for the first time, well, in this in this uh, in this school, for example, uh, we have a radio, you know. But I jump along, you know. I do my security set, and I start to look down to find the air the airport, you know. And, and I couldn't find anything that looked like me. <laughs> and I say, well. Okay, I can I can trust in my vision. Maybe any of those are the airport, but I can see it, you know. And uh, uh, suddenly I hear a voice that say, "Okay, 
You do your security set, very nice. You have to turn around 350 degrees, oh, uh, 800 and, and, and 180 degrees, wow. and you know the airport was parking. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that I, I jumped like uh, uh, 12 or, or 30 times, and it was very, very amazing experience. But the thing is that I think that it was a, a, a very riskful situation. We don't have to do that. We can find the right person. We can explain to others what we really want to do. And be sure that someone are going to say no, but someone are going to say yes. You could find the right person. You could find the right team. I am actually, I do uh, scuba diving. <coughs> and there is another funny story. Some, some days my, my, my instructor, he, he, really, he really knew that I was, you know, a visual impediment. Um, and in, in the ocean, it's, it's really weird because you can, you can talk, of course. Everything is, you know, um, with movement, with uh, sign language. Yeah, sign language. And of course, if you can see, you can. <laughs> it's pretty hard, you know? <laughs> and in some moments, I could realize that he was, you know, telling us that we should form uh, a little circle, you know, around him. And in that particular moment, I could see a big fish, you know, in, in the sea that people say that we could see a lot of fish, but of course for me it was not the, the true, you know. Sometimes I could see big fishes, but, but not all the time. And in that particular moment, I could see a very big fish that was beside me. And I, I start to look the fish and I, I turn around 100, uh, 180 degrees, you know, look in this fish, <clears throat> and when I finish my, my turn around, I couldn't see that no one was there. <laughs> yes, my instructor, all, all the all the persons, all the team disappeared. Oh, yeah. I, I tried to accurate my vision, you know, <laughs> to try to see what what's going on, where, where was the, 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 all the all, all the person? It wasn't like 10, 10, 10 in the team, <clears throat> and I couldn't I couldn't find anyone. And of course, in that moment, uh, I, I I I thought. Oh come on! You are blind. What are you doing here? Are you know you are going to be you know lost on the ocean? You are completely out of your mind. <laughs> and what's what's really scary in that in that particular moment? Uh, well, the thing is that the instructors come from the surface, and they was up. You know, they was the the the, the, the scuba diving was finished, but I couldn't see the you know the, the indications that we should go up. Well, the thing is. You know, moving on, we have to we have to find the right persons. We have to to build teams. I I I also because I really want I, I really love to do these kind of activities. You know, to have an active life. I I use <coughs> I, I I did uh, uh, climbing walls, rock rock climbing walls, and believe it or not, this is not a really really dangerous activity if you do with the right person with the right team. <clears throat> and and for a blind people, it's, it's 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 very possible to do that because you just have to feel, you know, you don't have to feel the rocks, and it's it's very nice. But that that was it's, that that wasn't possible if if I didn't uh, you know find the persons and accept that I have an impediment. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's very important that that the, the persons here who have uh, visual impediments, you know, accept. And, and and don't be don't be afraid that, that some others could reject you. Be sure that, that any others could accept you and, and are going to help you. One of the one of the most amazing things that happened to me was I started using the game. <clears throat> when I wasn't when I was when I didn't or when I when I don't use my game in the past, I feel like like I live in a in a very unhappy and a rush world, you know, when I, when I, of course that you know that, when you bump somebody, yeah. he's going to say, come on, man, what's going on? Yeah. Watch your step, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard, you know? But when you use your, your, your cane and you bump somebody, you say, oh, I'm sorry, are you, are you okay? <laughs> you know, it's, the world changed 100%, 180%, you know, it's, it's, it's very fine. You need to accept what is going on with you, and you need to, to realize that, 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 you have to find, you know, those kind of 
things that you really need and you need to find a way that that you could do your life easy and um, the, 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 the impediment this could be used on your paper for example when I when I start to look um, a partner of life you know in the past I used to minimize my problem and I used to you know do some couple of, of, of dates during the day you know in a place that I really knew and after a few days and a few uh, uh, dates and that's why that I say I have this little problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that was not the right way. Believe me. When I, I, you know, I developed this this, uh, uh, this system that I thought I really want a person who wants to share her life with me. You know, this every everyone everyone believe that, that, that that's not because we have an, an impediment. Everyone, for everyone, it's very difficult to find the right person. <clears throat> and I say, how can I find, how can I find for, from the very first day that she is a nice person, that she, don't, she really don't want to have, just have fun, and she really wants to share her life with me. Well, that's what, it's very easy. I just have to tell her that I have this, 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 this uh, limitation, that I have this illness, the risk, the challenge to come, yeah, for sure. And I remember that I explained, you know, everything with most of the details as I could. And that works. In my case, that works. I find the, the beautiful wife, the really lovely, and I have been, well, maybe not much, but seven years. <laughs> and that's that's what I'm talking about. You, you can you can use. You can, you can feel that, as I said a few minutes ago, that it is, it is, a, it is a, a very big problem, that it is a persecutor, or you can use it, you know, on your favor, you know, you can find the right way, the right, you know, the right thing. The, you can feel comfortable. You, you need to love your, your impediment. It's, it's very important that you do you do, do that. You know, I think that the life is an ongoing ending process. And right now, as I say, I, I came from from my country, from Venezuela. I am starting uh, a new life. Um, I am an economist. I studied at the university. That was that, that was really uh, believe me. That was a really hard. <laughs> that was really hard to do that. Because in my country they didn't they didn't understand anything. You you are living in a in a, in a you and I right now. We are living in an amazing country in an amazing place. Of course, have, it's difficult, but it's it's, it's, a, it's completely different. We have a lot of opportunities here. I came here, you know, to restart uh, to to reform, you know, to start my life again, and it's a, it's a very very big challenge. Uh, the adversity, you know, don't end some days. You need to be facing challenges during all your life. I'm here in a country with a new language, with uh, with new laws, with new rules, with new people. And you know, when you do the things, the right things, when you do the things in, in the right attitude, magic things start to happen. And like for me to be here today is one of those. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's very important that you, you never stop to challenge yourself. Right now, I have this amazing opportunity to, to start a, a, a major as a professor at the Nova University. And that's one of the most challenges to come. Uh, I think that this is a very amazing, uh, you know, profession. Uh, uh, <coughs> no, it's not profession. This is a very amazing way to, you know, to, to, to live. And I, I really want to get my PhD uh, because I really want to be, you know, researcher because I love that. 
And in my country, it was impossible because we passed the death. You know, if you are a researcher here, you know, you, here you have a lot of opportunities. And you have to be challenge yourself. And you need to start to do that today, you know? As me doing, you know, trying to, to do my best and trying to, to communicate with you, you need to do that today. You need to, to start to walk today to be an active life today and to discover this amazing world, beautiful and wonderful, full of opportunities, you know, that has a place for everybody, that has a person for everybody, that you just need to look for and to, you know, to will the challenge to, to pursue your dreams, you know. As I, as I hear someday that the past is history, the future is a mystery. And today is a gift. That's what we call it present. Thank you very much. Yes, you. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, we'll raise your hand and I'll pick on you. Anything you want to ask? <laughs> John. When did you discover you were crazy? <laughs> <laughs> did that, 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 because I'm, I'm a certified diver also. Um, scuba diver. Yes. Skydiving, mm. you're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to ask you if you can skydive. Well, I'm going to say a little bit louder. I would like to learn how to skydive. Yes, it's, it's not it's not it's not too difficult at the crazy no. is contagious. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Really you you need to find the right the right place. Of course you are you are not you don't want to be, you know, jumping in, in in a place that don't have, you know, the right, you know, facilities to do that. But you used to have a radio, you have to, to if you have a good instructor and you have the right way. And you could, you know, have the right, you know, guy. You could do it. Where you could do wherever you want, really. Okay. Um, actually, I have a few questions. My first question is: you, you said your vision came from the ten percent site. Can you explain what exactly was going to see that way? Um, and that way, and that question. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I, right now, I can see uh, something like turn, uh, uh, ten percent in central vision. Like if you look at them, so you look at them what do you see? Like if you look out at them, mm -hmm. what do you see? Uh, well, I can see it. In, in, if, I, if I s look direct to you, I can see you, but I can see your face. Okay, so you don't okay. see much of No, if, if I, if no. Uh, if, if, because for me, this place is, is a little dark. Yeah. Yes. And if I see you, I can see any anything else. I can see any other, well, I can see a, a, a girl behind you because yeah. it's, it's almost in the same, you know, direction of the yeah. view, but I can see anything else. And yeah. I can see my hands even here. Yeah, so that brings me to my next question. I actually have two more questions. Um, my next question is, as a person that's doing skydiving and that's doing scuba diving with the visual impairment, what techniques did you use? Because you said you couldn't see <laughs> when the other divers were using hand gestures and signals. So as a skydiver, I mean, yeah, you go into a classroom and they teach you what the focus is, but when you actually jump off that airplane, yeah. I mean, what, what techniques are you using? Like, which is visual Doing the scuba do diving, um, uh, after I, oh, I uh, after I, I lost in the ocean, <laughs> <laughs> my instructors bring a little, a little um, cord, a little cord, oh, and roll, you, you, roll. you would tether, yeah. Yes, they Yes. So they tied you to somebody else? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.